Welcome back. Ever since I can remember, I've been a feminist. As a child growing up in a religious environment, it was hard to miss the fact that half of my fellow Jews were ritually and communally disenfranchised. I didn't have the language or the political awareness at the time to articulate why it bothered me, but I knew that my discomfort with the status quo set me apart from most of my friends, both male and female. As I grew up, I realized that while the secular world was certainly leaps and bounds ahead of my parochial childhood communities, there were subtle and not so subtle ways in which the scourge of patriarchy prevailed everywhere. In many ways, the past two years have felt like a regression. The election of Donald Trump in the wake of his televised boasting of sexual assault was a big blow, and I don't think I'll ever forget that heart-wrenching day when Christine Blasey Ford testified about her sexual assault at the hands of Brett Kavanaugh. Her brave and composed honesty in that moment contrasting so sharply with Kavanaugh's unhinged and entitled temper tantrum. For my part, I'm trying to be a better kind of man, the kind that rejects toxic masculinity and stands with women in the fight against sexism. One small gesture that I've been engaging in for the past few years towards this end has been attending the Women's March. In 2017, the first Women's March was officially declared the largest demonstration in US history. I was there, and the incredible energy that I experienced is hard to put into words. Last year, I also attended, and while there weren't quite as many people as there had been in 2017, it was still packed, and I got to witness one of my all-time favorite LA moments. That's just about being brought down to hell. Oh, don't worry about us. We're covered by the blood. This year, the turnout wasn't as big. My reading on the drop in attendance is that the massive political success that Democrats enjoyed in the November midterms acted as a kind of release valve for the pressure that had driven so many of us in previous years. Whatever the reason, and in spite of some controversy over the leadership, this year's march was a great event. So without further ado, I bring you my coverage of the 2019 Women's March. today. This idiot. <laughs> and everything that he stands against that just is not what America is about. It's always important to come to the Women's March. I've been fighting for women's rights my whole life, the 70s, and we're still fighting this fight. We're still trying so hard to get the same kind of pay that men do, the same kind of opportunity, you know, and uh, women of color and of uh, transgender and gay women, everybody, all women. Did you watch the Kavanaugh hearings? I did. How did that make you feel? Um, it just kind of made me feel that women aren't getting, people don't support uh, women and their rights and we're still considered as less than. And I just had this overwhelming feeling that a man who tries to control women's bodies through policy is obviously been a man who's tried to control a woman's body at some other time in his life. gather here at City Hall in Los Angeles in 2019, united with women and men around the country and around the globe. And we are reminded that the power from these marches comes from all of us. All of us. Diverse in every possible way, from gender to race, to religious beliefs, to political beliefs, to upbringing, to socioeconomic background. 
joined together as one entity in the common idea that women and men deserve equal and equitable treatment and dignity. So that's it folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And if you'd like to hear more from me, you can catch my podcast, Four Cubits, on iTunes. Or you could rent my films at cutthefilm.com and withoutaland.com. I'll see you next time.